So in today's video, we talk about how to make your workplace and employee giving programs go global. Let's make a social impact. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to the Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals get the latest strategies and tips to help them develop and grow their CSR and goodness programs. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you wanna get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you're up to date. So today I'm joined by Goodness Catalyst with Benevity, Danielle Valley gilchrist and we're gonna talk about how to make your workplace giving global. Now, in our previous episodes, we talked about you know, how to start one um, and how to get your employees engaged. But I think this one is, let's say you have a program that's already well established. And let's say you work for an organization that you know, is, is beyond maybe your, your city or your province or even your country, right? The, they're international. How do you get your workplace giving program, I guess, how do you scale it to maybe the other countries or provinces or states um, that your company is in? Thanks so much for having me, Carl. And we are seeing more and more companies go global and finding ways to grow their employee giving programs in a global way. And the biggest thing is not only is it a nice to have, but it's really necessary for for having employee engagement and the, a feeling of inclusion throughout all of your different locations. So, if I had a local, if I had if I had a program that was local to my country, and I was looking to make a open it more globally. The first thing that I would do would be finding local champions um, so that that way you can be able to have folks on the ground that not only can create relevant content and really know the culture of that company, of that individual office quite well, but then also they're able to be really responsive to what's going on. The other factor that I would think about is languages and currencies. So making sure that whatever platform you're selecting, both employees are able to use their native tongue when they are on the site, as well as use their native currency. Because if I am, if I speak Spanish at home, Yes, I might speak English during the workday, but wouldn't it be great if while I was on my employee giving site, I was able to use use my native tongue and even give in my localized currency? Oh, that that that, that would be amazing. And and but actually, I want to unravel what we talked about here because there's so many elements that that I was just starting to think about. And so you said you mentioned local champions, and mm-hmm. that's awesome to find these local champions. Is there like a, a, I don't know know why I keep thinking like a grand champion, like somebody, (laughs) the the driving force that connects all these local champions together, right? Or is it more like, I guess the question is, is it more centralized or is it more regionalized? Like, is that giving program given a taunt, like, is it better to have autonomy in that local area versus, or is there like a one true program that that kind of oversees all the other programs you're you're right on on the money on this and i've seen companies go both models so there are certainly companies that want a more centralized approach and they want things to flow through headquarters of for example um if i want to build a fundraiser in poland i just have to ask have to check in with headquarters to make sure that that all is good Um, What we often encourage, though, is to really enable those local champions so that they're able to be reactive and they know what's going on and they're able to build their own campaign. So one example, Illumina actually built out job titles and, um, and had an entire robust training of the ways that their local champions could engage on the site. And that that way it's less work for the CSR team at headquarters because their champions are able to do a lot of the work for them. 
it, you know, to me, that's very interesting too, because I would think the local champions or just the local region itself would have mm -hmm. different events and different, you know, things that happen. So for example, here in Calgary, there are different um, events or milestones in the year that we could definitely take advantage of that, let's say you in Boston would be completely different, right? Like, yeah, exactly. I would imagine there's two big events that I could be thinking of the Boston Marathon and the Calgary Marathon Two, like, but I would imagine the Boston Marathon is something like a, a very big thing um, that is not as big here in Calgary. Please, any marathon runners here in Calgary, please don't hit me with that. But, <laughs> but I, I would just say the Boston Marathon is, is something that, you know, a lot of people think about that that's a, yeah. a lot, in a big, much grander scale than, than the Calgary Marathon. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I The beauty of having those local champions is they can really know what's going on on the ground. So for example, yes, I love the Boston Marathon. It is a lot of fun. Sign me up for the Calgary Marathon if it ever happens. But um, knowing that the Boston Marathon is normally in April, then I know if I'm going to have a fundraiser to support all of the marathon marathon runners that are doing charity runs i know to do that in april whereas the calgary one i think is later in the year and so i would know if i were the local champion in calgary i would know when to plan that and what would make sense for that office how do you go about budgeting these things is it i guess maybe back to the regional versus or the central approach is there a local budget is there one big regional that distributes that budget what have you seen that works better you're often going to see me say that you can do it lots of ways. I personally would recommend really empowering your local champions of setting them with a budget, empowering them to be able to plan what makes sense for that region that year. And then you can really hold them accountable to that, as well as for that, that, in, that local champion personal training. That's also great for their long-term career path to be able to have that experience, um, budget budget managing and event managing that it empowers their success as well. And I, I'm also seeing a, a, another cool benefit of this too, especially if you're in different countries or different states or different provinces is that, you know, let's say you have somebody who, you know, has done a really great job of, of, of creating a great program in one area have you seen where, you know, you take that local champion and you, you move them to different areas and then help that area or region grow as well? Um, I haven't seen as many examples of literally moving the people, but we steal ideas all the time of even, even um, within a company being able to say, this fundraiser worked well in Boston, but didn't work as well in Toronto what did we do differently and is there a way that we can adapt the campaign so that they're mutually beneficial and remember if you're getting value from this video we'd much appreciate you hitting that like button and the question of the day for you is how have you scaled your workplace giving program what were some of the challenges uh, that you faced let us know in the description below so danielle we talked about all the there, there's a lot of great benefits of this, but can you name off some of the challenges that you've seen in terms of scaling, whether that's the budget side, developing the people, or maybe even just conflict of, of where the program direction should be? Yeah, I mean, it does take a lot of planning and it is a corporate responsibility is a labor of love of putting together this, these events and these campaigns not easy and um really the folks that are on the ground deserve a lot of support um so one challenge that i often see is just bandwidth both as far as the local champions go and as far as the folks running the program at home making sure that they're that they're well supported that they're able to to do all of the work that they need to do and a big thing is having having a plan and have and sticking to it but also having the ability to to be a little proactive of for example know that there's probably going to be a disaster in 2021 so let's have a little bit of our budget held back so that we're prepared when heaven forbid something bad happens 
And is it about growing, like when, when you're scaling, is it about growing one place at a time or is it kind of like two places at a time? Like how have you seen this work? I've seen it work both ways. Of A lot of our clients launch all of their com- all of their countries globally on the same day. And the beauty of that is if you have a, if you have company meetings happening that day, folks from all of the different offices will be talking about their employee giving day. Um, of course, if you need to have more of a crawl, walk, run approach, then the, that is always possible as well of being able to phase in one country and then the other and and possibly have payroll earlier or later and things like that. And if you were to to maybe boil it down to one, two, maybe three key elements that you need to successfully scale your workplace giving, would you what would those three or one, two or three things be? I think the biggest thing is having executive support and a plan. Um, so that you know the business case, you know what you're doing and why. And then once you have once you have a plan, then using those local champions to really execute on it. Oh, and, and you know what? I, I forgot to ask. How do you, you know, we talked about in, in a previous video, and I'll leave that in up here in the description below about finding your local champions. But when we're talking about scaling, how do you go about finding those local champions in those areas? when? It's, it's going to be a lot harder than, than one if you're just starting out, right? One example is one of our clients literally tra- did a travel to all of the different offices to be able to get to know the on-the-ground folks to be able to select those champions. If that's either not, not in the budget or not possible due to social distancing, there are other ways that you can have a on-the-ground um, on the ground coffee sh- coffee chat with those champions to be able to really find who who cares about it as well as chatting with leadership to be able to see see who already is showing an aptitude for this and really ask them to get more involved. Do you know, do you have anything else to add in terms of scaling your workplace giving program? No, Carl, thanks for having the chat. There's a lot more that we could geek out on as far as international giving. So keep stay tuned and pop any questions in the comments. And if you want to learn more about employee and workplace giving, you got to check out this playlist here, as well as this playlist for additional tips and strategies on developing and growing your CSR program. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next episode.